Hey everybody, this is Carlos Miller from Photography is Not a Crime. And here we have attorney Warren Redlick and Taylor Hardy, who just was, he just got out of court. He was found, well, it was dismissed. The yeah. case was dismissed. He was arrested back in August, I believe. Back in August. He, yeah, he was taking pictures outside of a, of a commercial film set where LeBron James was supposed to be at. So he was going to take some pictures. He was standing on a public sidewalk. They told him he has to leave. He asserted his right to stay there and they called a cop who apparently was working off duty getting paid by the by nike and the cop told him to leave and he again asserted his right he had a press pass on there was other people around who were not taking pictures and he was arrested and i wrote about it on my blog and this time i, I really wasn't as aggressive about it as i would have been normally for example he does have a video of the arrest which we never posted which shows the cop was being very aggressive with him, although the cop said in his report that Taylor was being verbally aggressive. And so we wanted to see how this played out if they decided to pursue it like they do to my, with my cases where they try to go all out and they end up losing. And, and Warren, who happens to be a, a photographer and a crime reader, he's an attorney. He moved down from New York. He also ran for office at one point up in New Once York. Once or twice. <laughs> and, and he reached out to me and said, look, I'm looking for cases to do pro bono. I have to do pro bono cases. I believe maybe every few hours, some hours every year. 20 hours a year, I think. 20 hours a week. So I said, you know, I got the perfect case for you. you know, Taylor Hardy was, you know, he, he's a student. He school, so he doesn't have a whole lot of money to spend. He works and, and he goes to school. So I said, let's, let's pair these guys up. And they did. So, you know, Warren came out to represent him and they filed a motion to dismiss, right? Yes. Which we, was a, okay. And just to be clear, I got to deal with what's presented to me. So the way the police presented the case... Was, had nothing to do with filming. The police presented the case as the officer told Taylor to leave, and Taylor refused to leave, and he charged him with obstructing an officer, without, or resisting an officer without violence. And resisting an officer, it has nothing to do with whether you're filming, whatever. The officer claims he's carrying out what he would, what's called a legal duty under the law, and he did not comply with the officer's instructions and resisted without being violent, but by not giving in to the officer. It's kind of a bogus charge inherently. Yes. Um, it's kind of like when they charge you with resisting arrest, but they don't arrest you for anything. Well, I've been except charged, resisting I've been arrest. Three times with that, so I know so, that very well. So it's it's a, it's a bogus charge, and um, the problem is that the Taylor was standing in a public place, and he has every right to stand in a public place. The police have no right to tell him you can't stand there. Right. So when the police tell him you can't stand there, he asserted his rights to say, you know, I'm gonna, I have my right to stand there, and he, I don't. From the video I saw, uh, he was not aggressive, he was not rude, he was just asserting his rights, which we have the right to do. That's why they're called rights. And um, what, what's um, almost, and so we made a motion to dismiss. We made the motion that, um, that you know, number one, he didn't, do, he didn't resist the officer. The officer didn't have a legal duty to remove him. Um, and it, without a legal duty, it's not proper and, and the charge fails. So we made that motion, and as typical in my experience in South Florida, there was no response to the motion. The prosecutor didn't submit any documents, nothing. We showed up to court on the day of trial, and the police officer didn't show up, and the case was dismissed as a matter of routine. And we saw a lot of cases when we were sitting there where they would call a case, is the officer here? No, and the prosecutor would just say, all right, we're gonna null pros, which means it's Latin for not prosecute. So the case was dismissed. So we never got to the substance of the motion because it didn't matter. They were dismissing it anyway. Um, but it's, I think it's difficult for people uh, in the courtroom to deal with their case, and it's nervous, nerve-wracking, and, and frustrating. For an attorney, it's just very routine. We walk in. It's not the only case we've ever dealt with, and it's easy to walk in for us to say, Judge, here's what we want to do. Yeah. So. Well, well, what happens is, you know, they charge Taylor with resisting arrest, and, you know, that's a misdemeanor. You can serve up to a year in jail for that. And you've already had a, you paid bail, you had to pay a lot of other charges. So, so that, I mean, that in itself is stressful. You know, the cops will say, okay, you know, you, they'll always say you, you can beat the rap, but you can't beat the ride. And in your case, you spent almost 24 hours in jail for taking pictures and you still had to, you had to walk to your car and tell us about that. Man, that, that experience, it was just nerve wracking. Um, you're in jail with people who actually committed crimes and you're there for such a small crime and you're like, what, what did I do to deserve this, this treatment in the end? Um, and to, you know, to be locked into a cell with some other guy who you have no idea who he is, it's demoralizing in the end. I mean, it just, it just, it just 
that's your lowest point in your life in, in, your, in, your, in your eyes. Um, I have the video, and you, you'll see the video in a few minutes, but I mean, it was just uncalled for, in my opinion. It was totally uncalled for. This is a public area, isn't it? Not? Go, go now, go, go. This, this, this is reserved. I asked you to use this. Hey, this area. Is sidewalk. Sidewalk. Please, please, watch what out. I asked you to do, then you all right. Sir, go, leave go, the go, area, go, please. Go. Public sidewalk, sir. I mean, I'm public. I'm explaining something to you. Let's go over here. Sir. Let's go over here. Why are you touching me, huh? I'm explaining something to you. I'll tell you right now. This area is reserved. It sounds like this was a case of contempt of cop, where you stood up for your rights, the cop did not like that, because cops are not used to people, they're not used to people standing up for their rights, so usually a cop says move, people move, because people don't want to go to jail, they don't want to go through this whole hassle, even though if they know they're right, but you know, we're, we're at a very crucial time now where, where we do have video and we have evidence and we just can't allow them to just walk all over our rights, because then we'll lose them and then we have no right. So, and this is a really good case of an example of why what you guys do, photography is not a crime, why what you guys do is important because the police officer made claims in his uh, paperwork that, that Taylor was uh, verbally aggressive, that Taylor was, you know, that it was, it was pretty vague what he said, but he, he made claims about it that were very clearly not accurate when we look at the video that Taylor recorded. And I think it's really important if you're going to have an encounter with the police and you know you're going to have an encounter, you, you worry that you might have an encounter with the police, you should be ready to record that encounter. Yeah. Um, and uh, when you assert your rights, you know, maintain, remain calm. Don't call the police officer names. Don't, don't use physical force. Don't, you know, physically, don't, you know, don't push the officer. But at the same time, you know, the minute you, he pushes you and you don't back down, you've resisted an officer without violence. Yeah. It's absurd, but that's the way it is. That's why you want to record the encounter so a judge or a jury are going to see that and say, hey, wait a minute, what's going on here? And the more that people record these encounters, the more that that happens, the more you're going to see police being more careful. Because yeah. what we really want, I mean, the real purpose of this is we want a society where, the, you know, I talk to people about these encounters and they say, well, well they're worried they worry about what the police might do to them if they assert their rights. Yeah. And we want to live in a world where people aren't afraid to assert their rights. And by you doing what you're doing, you're making the bad cops nervous. And you're making them more careful. And we want them to be more careful. We don't want the bad cops to harass innocent people. We don't want the bad cops to violate people's rights. And we want people to feel comfortable asserting their rights. Yeah. And um, when I tell people that I encourage people not to talk to police, well, won't they get mad at me? Well, they might get mad at you, but you have the right to remain silent. And you ought to remain silent. And um, I can do this now, I guess. <laughs> I have this, um, this card that I use. Um, it says, I remain silent, no searches, I want my lawyer. And at the bottom in red are some, some language about, to the police officer. Uh, it says, please put any tickets under windshield wiper. Um, sorry. It says, please put any tickets under windshield wiper. I'm not required to sign section 31814 subsection 2. I'm not required to hand you my license, section 322.15. Thus, I am not opening my window. I will comply with clearly stated lawful orders. Now, the point of that is, number one, I remain silent. You've asserted your yeah, right to remain silent. Let's just clarify. That's if you go through a checkpoint. This is for a traffic stop or a checkpoint. You're in your so car. If you get pulled over for, yeah. for speeding or running a red yeah. light, you still... You just you don't have to talk. You can just show them that. I would say any encounter with the police. I have a business card version of it too that you can just hand to police, and it's just smaller, and it only has the three lines because this is specifically for a car. But the idea is to hand it to police. I'll show you the, the business card too. Um, the idea is to hand it to police. If you encounter the police on the street the way Taylor did, um, you have this, and it says, "I remain silent. No searches. I want my lawyer." And the card is carefully tailored for the situation that, you know, this goes back to, uh, we talked before about photography is not a crime and specific cases that say you can record. Well, there are specific cases that say you have the right to remain silent. There are specific cases that say you don't have to consent to searches and you have the right to an attorney. And there's specific constitutional amendments. So what happened was there was a recent Supreme Court case, I think you mentioned to me earlier, where the Supreme Court said that somebody has to affirmatively assert their right to remain silent, which is kind of like a catch-22, right? It's, you have to affirmatively assert your right to remain silent, so you have to say, I'm remaining silent? You have to not be silent in order to be yeah. silent? Yeah. It's yeah. a catch-22, and that's nonsense. 
So the idea of the card, either the big card or the business card, is you assert your rights without having to speak. And that's important because I, as your lawyer, do not want you speaking. I don't want you to talk at all. We've seen, I think one of the motivations for me about doing this also, there's been a string of videos lately where a guy goes through a checkpoint and he records the encounter and he says, officer, am I legally required to answer your question? Officer, am I being detained? He just told you to pull over. You're being detained. Yeah. You know, and no, you're not, you know you're not legally required to answer his question. You have the right to remain silent, so, so don't answer any questions. But those cards are specifically tailored for Florida, right? Because you put This particular statute. card, I have one for New York and I have one okay. for California. This particular card is for Florida. They're on my website. My website is fairdui.org, F-A-I-R-D-U-I.org. That's a general website so, advocating for fair drunk driving So laws. people can order those if they want? You can just download the PDF and print it. Oh, P- um, in theory, I'm going to mail people. Yeah. If somebody in South Florida wants a free copy, I'll mail it to them because for me, there's sort of a side benefit of marketing because my, my uh, contact, it, it has instructions on the back of the card, which you're not going to be able to read here, but it has instructions that explain the card in more detail. Place the other side against the window of your car so the police can read it. So the idea is you put this up against the window of your car and that's what the police officer sees. Okay? And now the police officer's got a challenge. What am I going to do next? So then it says, do not speak at all, not one word. This is a big frustration I have as an attorney with my clients. I hate when my clients talk to police. Yeah. I've never had a client who said something and it made things better. So don't talk at all, okay? Just not talk one word. That makes it hard for people like us who are journalists who, who <laughs> like to <laughs> engage. In, but you know, that's just me. But, well, but, you, you but there's do different situations. Advice. My point is if you're, if you're being pulled over on a Friday night and you were out with friends right, that's and you might have had a glass yeah. of wine, you know you're sober, you've got 10 witnesses who will say you're sober, but you don't want to go through all the crap that happens when you get arrested for drunk driving, yeah. then you don't want to talk to police at all. Yeah. You just don't, and you may not, you may not understand why I'm telling you, like, we can have a long conversation about why you don't want to talk to police. I'm just telling you, I've never had a client who talked to police and made things better. Well, I have a quick question for you. Um, I was charged under resisting arrest without violence, 842.02, I believe it was. And that law, in my, in my eyes, is a catch-all law. It's a very broad law. You know, yes. it, it, it's a, the statute is so broad that if, if, you know, if you don't talk to police, they can charge you with that statute also. Okay, but he said you were verbally aggressive. Correct. You spoke. Correct. If you say anything, you give him an excuse to lie and say that you were verbally aggressive. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if they suspect intoxication, when you speak, they will say, this is one of my favorite stories. They will say that you had impaired speech. Every drunk driving case I've had just about, mm-hmm. the police say the defendant had impaired speech. I had a client who's from Japan. Yeah. His English was terrible. And the police officer testified in open court that he had impaired speech, that his speech was slurred. How would you know? Yeah. How would you know if somebody has <laughs> impaired speech, if they're from Japan and their native language is Japanese? And this is a big issue here in South Florida. Yeah. You got uh, American, you know, what's, what's the right word? You have Caucasian Anglos. officers, uh, Anglo Caucasian officers who only speak English. There's some of them out there, right? There's a lot of cops mm-hmm. who don't speak Spanish. Yeah. And then you got a guy who doesn't speak any English. Well, he had impaired speech. Well, of course he had impaired speech. He doesn't speak English. Yeah. But how do you determine? And somebody from you know, Argentina might sound different from somebody from Spain. Is that slurred speech or is that just the way they talk there? Well, in Spain, they had a the lisp. That could be slurred speech. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. So, um, so I don't want my clients talking at all. So it says, do not speak at all, not one word. Then it says, record everything with audio and if possible video. You really want to catch the recording because when the police officer says you were verbally aggressive, if the recording shows you said, but officer, I have the right to film here. I, obviously, I don't want you talking at all, but if he says you said something and the, the audio shows you didn't say anything at all, now we've got a problem where the police officer is caught lying and that's the goal. The, the goal of the audio and video is to catch when the police lie because the thing is, I'm sorry, there's some good cops, there's some bad cops out there. But I've seen a lot of cops lie in my career, a lot, and I've caught a lot of them lying. And it's hard to persuade a judge and a jury that it's a lie because they don't want to believe that they're lying, but when it's on video, it's much more powerful. And the other thing, um, you want to keep your hands where the officer can see them because there's a legitimate reality for police officers. Their number one goal every day out on the job is to get home safe. And there are people who are dangerous to police officers, and we want police officers not to feel threatened because when a police officer feels threatened, he gets more leeway in how he treats you. Um, but you know, generally speaking, you don't know whether you have a good cop or a bad cop. You don't want to ruin a good cop's day. Yeah. You want to be reasonable with a good cop. You still want to assert your rights, but you don't want to make him nervous and scare yeah. him. 
So you want to make sure your hands are visible so they're not worried about a weapon. Um, 